Well, it's good to be with you this morning. Today we're going to be in Matthew chapter 21. Uh, we're going to be t discussing uh, the first 11 verses, uh, which is the triumphal entry. Um, this is uh, the week often referred to as Passion Week or Holy Week. Matthew chapter 21, Matthew records the story beginning in verse 1. When they had approached Jerusalem and had come to Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied there and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says to you, you shall say, uh, if anyone says anything to you, you shall say, the Lord has need of them, and immediately he will send them. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, gentle, and mounted on a donkey, even on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did just as Jesus had instructed them, and brought the donkey and the colt, and laid their coats on them, and he sat on their coats. Most of the crowd spread their coats on the road, and others were cutting branches from the trees and spreading them on the road. The crowds going ahead of him and those followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he had entered Jerusalem, all the city was stirred, saying, Who is this? And the crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. There are really three types of followers in this story, uh, three types of people uh, who came out to be a part of this triumphal entry, this entry into Jerusalem. Um, uh, these three groups are often who we find uh, interested in spiritual things today, uh, who we find in church, uh, when we have church in person, <laughs> not right now, but maybe those who are uh, interested in digital church uh, services around the globe. There's really these three different seekers, if you will, three different types of people. I think we can classify them all into these three groups. Uh, the first group is uh, in, in the context and the story are those who saw Jesus's miracles and heard his teaching, right? And they're the ones following him into Jerusalem. Uh, John uh, chapter 12, uh, verse 17, when in his account of the entry uh, says, So the people who were with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to testify about him. And for this reason, also the people went and met him because they heard that he had performed this sign. So one of the groups of people that were there in this uh, Palm Sunday, in this triumphal, uh, triumphant entry into Jerusalem, uh, were the people who saw or heard about the amazing miracles that Jesus had performed. Not just the raising of Lazarus from the dead, but many others, healing the blind and feeding the thousands. Uh, the many miracles that Jesus did, people heard about those things, and so they were interested in seeing him. Previously in the gospel story, uh, we have already heard about how people would follow Jesus, how they would seek after him and seek him out, and the crowds would uh, become so great that he would have to teach uh, from sitting uh, in a boat off the shore uh, because they were pressing in on him so much. And so this is not a new thing. Followers, people who are interested in the many amazing things that Jesus has done and continues to do. So that's one type of people uh, that are, are here in this story. Uh, people who um, saw Jesus' miracles and heard his teaching. And then there's a second group of people. Uh, those are those who are caught up in the moment. I don't know if you've... Uh, uh, spent much time uh, grazing through the videos on YouTube for mobs or flash mobs and those things. There's uh, different ones. Sometimes people 
uh, sporadically burst into singing and everybody sitting around them um, will start singing also and everybody will join in. I've seen it on subway cars and food courts in the mall and different videos have been out there. Uh, you can also uh, find ones for sporting events where uh, you know there's just this mentality that uh, arises. They call it a mob mentality. Because everyone else is involved in it, then somebody else joins in. This happens uh, often, and, and definitely this is the case here. Uh, there is a traveler, there is a pilgrim, there is a, a wise teacher. Uh, it says, all the city was, was stirred, and they were asking, who is this, right? Some people didn't even know who Jesus was, and yet they were there greeting him and shouting, uh, being caught up in the crowd, caught up in the mob. And that's one type of people group that we see here in this story. There were those who saw the miracles, saw his teaching. Uh, then there were those who didn't know anything about the guy and were asking, who is this? <laughs> and yet they were there and they were celebrating this triumphant entry, saying, according to verse 9, uh, all the crowds were saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. So we have those who knew uh, Jesus by his miracles and by his teaching, um, those who were just caught up in the moment, caught up in the, the feel of it, the, the energy that was there. And there was a lot of energy there. Luke uh, chapter 19, verses 38 through 40, uh, give us an indication. Uh, the Pharisees say, hey, tell all of your people to be quiet <laughs> because they were shouting, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And the Pharisees said to Jesus, you know, tell them to be quiet. Stop, stop, stop them from saying these things. And Jesus said, if they don't shout, then the rocks will cry out, <laughs> uh, which I, I think is amazing. You know, there was this uh, electric, uh, electricity in the, in the city. <clears throat> People were excited about what was going on, uh, so much so that Jesus said, this will continue. This is going to happen. If it's not these people, it's going to be the very rocks. Interesting, you know, these two types of, of people. We see these people in the church, people who have read the Bible, people who know about God, uh, people who have heard things about Jesus, people who have heard the teachings of, of many pastors and preachers around the world. Maybe they um, fell into uh, reading the Bible because a friend <clears throat> suggested that they read it, or maybe they uh, saw uh, a TV preacher, uh, maybe they uh, read a book uh, where someone professed faith in Christ. But uh, it's not that they uh, truly believe these things, it's that they're interested, right? So there are seekers, and then there are people who are caught up in the moment, in the feeling of it all, and they are uh, expressing worship for, for Christ. But there's a third group, and those are those who actually knew who Jesus was and who he claimed to be, and they accepted it, right? Um, we have examples of this within Jesus' own, own 12 uh, disciples. Jesus asked them, who, who do you say that I am? Who do the people say that I am? And they said, well, some say you're a prophet, some say Elijah. Um, but Jesus asked, her, asked them in Mark uh, chapter 8, verse 29, says he continued questioning them, uh, saying, But who do you say that I am? And Peter answered and said to him, You are the Christ. That word Christ in the Greek means Messiah. Uh, and so they, they knew that Jesus was the Messiah. Now they had a different understanding of who the Messiah was and what the Messiah would do but they still recognized him as the Messiah. And then later on, on the Mount of Transfiguration, the story recounted Peter, James, and John were there, and they saw uh, Jesus transfigured before them. They heard uh, the Father's voice out of heaven saying, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And so they saw uh, of their own eyes, and they had seen the many miracles that Jesus had done, and they had said, you are God. And of course, in this story even, <clears throat> In verse 3, Jesus is telling them that they should go and get this donkey and the colt tied with her. Uh, and he says, if anyone says anything to you, you shall say, the Lord has need of them. That Greek word uh, is kurios, uh, Lord. 
Uh, it's the word to describe the God, not just a God, not not a a, a term of of honor um, like sir uh, or rabbi, even a great teacher, and none of those things. This word is God. They would understand it as Jesus saying, uh, if anyone says to you uh, anything, uh, say to them, the Lord, say to them, God has need of them, and immediately they will send them. And so the, the, the disciples did not balk at this at all, even with their Jewish heritage. Uh, they did not um, resist this truth. Jesus essentially is claiming to be God. He is the one in need of this donkey and this cult. He is the one that is going to use them. Uh, now, maybe they could have uh, believed that Jesus was simply saying, well, um, God is behind me. He is supporting me. He, he wants me to do this work and wants me to enter this way. Yet, the language of, of Zechariah, the language of Psalms, um, the, what was spoken through the prophets uh, uh, is, is clear in verse 5. Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, gentle and mounted on a donkey, even on a colt, a foal, a beast of burden. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Um, uh, these statements are statements uh, that the scripture says the disciples would look back on and say, oh, that's what's going on. That's that's who this is. Now we get it. And so these three groups of people, those who saw Jesus' miracles, those who heard his teaching, but not necessarily uh, were his disciples, not necessarily those who believed. Um, they were invited by those who believed. And then those who were just caught up in the moment, um, uh, the city was electrified and the energy of it. And so they were involved in what was taking place. And then there were those who truly knew the claims of Jesus and believed what he said. Even if they didn't fully understand it at this point, they believed uh, in Christ. Uh, there were many who uh, followed that line of thinking. And then, of course, uh, you know, even in Christ's death, uh, there was the centurion that says, surely this man was the Son of God, whom he claimed to be. And so people from this point forward will begin to acknowledge Jesus as God. Uh, but those are the three types of followers here. And so my question for you today is, which type of follower are you? Are you a follower because someone invited you to church, but you haven't necessarily committed uh, your life to Christ, uh, that you've read the Bible and you, you like the teaching, you like the morality, you like the ethics, you like the idea of God, but you haven't yet personally accepted him, right? Are, are you one that fits into that first category? You've seen the miracles, you've seen God do amazing things, you know God is real. Uh, the Bible says even the demons know that God is real and they shudder, but there's a difference between knowing that God is real, reading God's word, and putting faith and trust in God to save you for your eternity. There's a difference there. Are you that first category, or are you the second category? You're just caught up in the moment. Maybe you've been to church, and you've uh, felt the difference, and you've experienced worship, and you uh, have listened to some of these songs that we've been putting on a Facebook page, and you've um, heard and felt uh, the wonderful spirit of, of worship. Uh, Hebrews talks about those people, that there are people who have tasted the heavenly gift, right? It's not that they've acknowledged it for themselves, but they've been caught up in the moment. And on the surface, it seems as though they are believers. And yet Hebrews says that they are not, uh, that they have not truly come to faith in Christ. And they eventually, as John says, uh, would leave the church. They would fall away from sound doctrine and those things. So those first two categories, there are many people, many seekers, many followers of Jesus who fall into those two categories. They've gotten caught up in the hype in the moment. They felt the presence of the Lord and they've seen the miracles that God does. And then there are those who have heard from someone else, the teaching, have read for themselves. And they have the knowledge, yet not the belief. I, my hope is that you will be in the third category, true followers of Jesus. Uh, Christianity is those who follow Christ, follow the Messiah. To be a Christian is those who understand and believe who Jesus claimed to be. Jesus clearly says, the Lord has need of this donkey and of this cult. 
He claimed to be God, and we have to acknowledge that in Scripture. Jesus, over and over, makes those claims, and we have to decide what to do with those claims. Uh, C.S. Lewis uh, said that Jesus uh, was either uh, a liar, a lunatic, or he was Lord. <laughs> either he lied and uh, claimed to be God, and yet he knew that he wasn't. <laughs> uh, uh, many people have, have made this claim, and, and uh, I thought it interesting. Uh, the, the gospel singer Mark Lowry said, well, um, the silence of Mary at the cross is a testament to Jesus's truthfulness, to the fact that he wasn't crazy. Because what mom, what mother would stay silent at the cross, right? Uh, especially if she knew whether or not he was crazy, <laughs> right? <laughs> Mary would be saying, hey, don't kill him. He's just crazy. Like he, he has split personality. He, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Uh, you know, don't, 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 don't kill him, right? Uh, lock him up, you know, put him in a padded room, but don't kill him. Mary's silence at the cross in many ways is a testimony that she believed Jesus was who he said he was, and also that Jesus believed that. Of course, what sane person uh, who knew that he was lying would allow himself to die for a lie, right? He would say, okay, no, I was, I was just kidding. Uh, not, not really the case. C.S. Lewis says he, he's either a liar, a lunatic, or Lord, right? Well, most people don't die for a lie. Uh, and definitely the followers uh, of Jesus are an even greater testimony to the truthfulness of what transpired uh, because they would undoubtedly not die for a liar. Uh, was he crazy? Was he a lunatic? Did he just not understand? Well, people have made that claim. And yet the things that he says and the things that he does all throughout the Gospels are a testament to the saneness of Jesus. Um, he does amazing things and is truthful, and in no way does he exhibit any characteristics of someone who has lost their mind. And so if he's not a liar, and if he's not a lunatic, then he must be the Lord, as he claims to be. The Lord has need of them. So which are you? Are you someone who has heard and read the Bible, who have heard from other Christians, who are interested in those things, who acknowledges that God is real and that you believe in him, and yet you still have not accepted the claims of Christ. You still have not believed that Jesus truly is the way to be saved. If that's you this morning, then I hope that you will have a change of heart. I hope by looking at the Passion Week, the Holy Week, that you will think differently about the claims of Jesus. Are you one of those who have just gotten caught up in the moment Right, who have just felt the energy of uh, being part of a, a community, a body of believers filled with the Spirit. Uh, if that's you, then I encourage you, don't just be caught up in the moment. Have true, authentic faith. Understand the, the claims of Christ and the doctrine that we receive from the Bible and accept that. And finally, that third group, those who knew who Jesus claimed to be and accepted it. That group has a responsibility. Not only do we have faith in Christ, and not only do we have the Spirit of God within us, but we have the responsibility to continue to share the story, to continue to share what God has done in our lives personally, and also what he can do for others who are so close to believing in God's word. I hope this is an encouragement to you today. I encourage you. I put a link up on the page uh, for uh, an app. This app is called Easter Now, and you can get it on Android or on iPhone, and it will walk you through the events of Passion Week, the events of Holy Week. And it's very exciting. It's, it's, it's a great tool. It will give you uh, an understanding of what took place and will walk you through day by day the events of Passion uh, this is the most important week for Christians because this is the week where Jesus uh, triumphantly came into Jerusalem, uh, set things straight, was ultimately crucified, and then rose again. And that's what we'll be celebrating next week. So I encourage you, uh, download that app, listen to these messages, worship, uh, enjoy the time that God has given you uh, to be at home and to study. 
I, I'm praying for you, and I, I pray that God blesses you this week.